Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking more about Intel versus AMD, especially with the developments from Computex in which Intel announced a 28 core CPU which apparently is falsely advertised or at least implied to be able to hit 5 gigahertz though uh, gamers nexus did a very quick and really great rundown video of why that is just complete baloney and i'll go ahead and link to that uh, down below to take a look at but basically the gist of it is yes the 28 core could hit 5 gigahertz if you have exotic cooling solutions to actually be able to get it there. And we're talking about, of course, sub ambient temperatures. And then of course, AMD hit right back with a 32 core variant of the Threadripper processor. This would be the Threadripper 2 series, which follows up last year's Threadripper series, which went up to 16 cores. So they are effectively doubling the cores from 16 to 32, at least the high end chip, the highest end chip that is, which would also mean 64 threads. Now to get this out of the way right away, the Intel 28 core as well as the AMD 32 core chips that were just announced are not geared towards gamers. In fact, both companies offer better gaming processors than these two high-end desktop processors. On AMD side, for example, you'd probably wanna to stick to the regular Ryzen 2 lineup, whether it be a 2600, 2600X, 2700, or 2700X, and that's because you can push the frequencies higher on those chips than you're likely able to accomplish with a Threadripper 2 series chip, especially if you don't have really solid cooling. Because I imagine if you're actually wanting to push a Threadripper Ripper 2 chip to something like 4.1 or 4.2 gigahertz across all cores, you're gonna need exceptionally strong cooling to be able to get anywhere near that. And the same holds true with the Intel side of things. That five gigahertz mark as uh, Gamers Nexus went over is because Intel was using those exotic cooling solutions. You can hit five gigahertz on something like an 8700K fairly easily with a really good air cooler or something like an AIO uh, water cooler. So stick to those sort of lower cost and better gaming chips if you are strictly a gamer. These processors are just not for you. Now, of course, if you're in the professional space and you can actually take advantage of all these extra cores and threads, this little competition between AMD and Intel is just a boon for you because ultimately it's pushing the cost of cores and threads down further and further. Uh, before AMD really got back into the competition with Intel, uh, Intel was able to charge really whatever it wanted for high-end desktop chips, and we weren't seeing core counts or thread counts nearly this high on chips that we would put in the high-end desktop space. You would have to go towards a Xeon chip, which are even more expensive to get anywhere close to those core and thread counts that we're seeing now from Intel. And of course, on AMD side, you're getting similar performance performance, it's not as good per core or per, per thread or per clock for that matter as Intel, but you're getting the cores and threads at a very cheap cost comparatively. So it's a really great time for somebody that may need to have a lot of extra cores or threads because there are A, options available and B, those options are getting cheaper and cheaper. And the last thing to note here is that for those of you that may be upgrading from the original Threadripper to Threadripper 2, Anantech actually spoke with motherboard vendors and Anantech also wrote in an article that uh, some existing X399 motherboards may actually have trouble uh, with power delivery for the Threadripper 2 series of chips because of the increased power demands. So that's just something to be aware of. And of course, I'll link that article down below as well. So let me know what you think about the ongoing sort of battle between Intel and AMD with core counts and uh, clock speeds with these high-end desktop chips. And if you plan on getting one of these newly announced processors, let me know which one down below in those comments. And of course, if you like this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment down below Below. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. They are the same tag for your convenience. And also, as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.